Hello guys, welcome back. This is Saifuddin Ghanizada with another tutorial on Windows Server 2022 Standard Edition. In this video, I will show you how you can add a new domain controller into your existing domain. Let's start. First of all, we should know a few points. You can add as many domain controller to your existing domain as you want. There is no limitation for adding domains to your existing domain. The question is that what is the purpose of adding a domain controller if you already have one? The answer is to provide fault tolerance and load balancing in Active Directory. I should not forget to mention that all domain controllers replicate the Active Directory database with each other. So if you want to add a new domain controller to your existing domain, they automatically replicate all the data and the Active Directory database with each other so that all the Active Directory have the same data and database. For the purpose of this video, I have already created two virtual machines. As you can see, this is my existing domain. The domain name is techforall.com and the computer name is this, the default name that I haven't changed. The IP address is from class C, 192.168.137.3. And the role of this server is domain controller, DHCP server, and DNS server. Let's switch to the second server. This is a newly installed server. I have renamed the server to winserver dc-02 and I want to make it an additional domain controller. It has not been joined to any domain. As you can see, it's in a work group. And the IP address is 192.168.137.5. Before we proceed, you should assign the DNS or the IP address of your existing domain controller to the DNS of this server, because we will be joining this server to the existing domain and then promote it as a domain controller. Click on the IP address. It will open the network connections page. Right click on the Ethernet adapter. Select properties. From the Ethernet properties, select IPv4. Double click on it. And here you have to assign the IP address of your DNS server. In my case, it is 192.168.137.3. Click OK. OK. And close this page. Now let's check whether this server has connectivity to the existing domain controller or not. To check the connectivity, open CMD and ping the IP address of the server. Now let's ping the domain name. As you can see, there is no connectivity issue between this server and the existing domain controller, and also the DNS server works. Now let's proceed to the next step, which is installing the Active Directory Domain Services rule. Click on the dashboard, click on the Add Rules and Features, click on the Next button, select Role-based or Feature-based installation, as I have only one server, it is by default selected from the server pool. Click on the next button. From the rules, you have to select Active Directory Domain Services. Here it says that the following tools will be installed. It's OK. Click the Add Features button. Click Next. The features that are needed for the Active Directory Domain Services will be automatically selected, such as Group Policy Management, Microsoft Defender Antivirus, and so on. Click on the next button. Here it gives you some information about the Active Directory domain services. Click next. Here you can see that which rules and features will be installed. After you have reviewed the tools and features, click on the install button. Now promote this server to a domain controller. Click on this text. 
In the deployment configuration, you have to select add a domain controller to an existing domain because we already have a domain and we want to add a new domain controller to the existing domain. First, you have to specify credentials. Click on the change button. Specify the username and password. As I haven't created any extra super user in the existing domain controller, so I will go with the administrator account. You can see that the domain name is by default selected. But if you have too many domains under your forest, you can select it from here. Click on the next button. Here you can see that it has by default selected the DNS server and DNS server is needed so that the Active Directory works well. And from the site name by default, it has selected the default first site name Provide the Active Directory Restore Mode Password. Click on the Next button. Click on the Next button. Here you can specify that from which domain controller it should replicate the Active Directory database. Select your domain controller and click the Next button. I won't change the database, log files, and syswall folders. I will leave it as it is. Click on the next button. Here you can review the options. After you have reviewed them, click on the next button. Now it's checking for the prerequisites. The prerequisites checking has been passed successfully. Click on the install button to promote the server to a domain controller. Point to be noted that your server will be restarted after the server is promoted to the domain controller. Now the server will be restarted. Log into the domain controller. Now let's check how many domain controllers do I have in my existing domain. Click on the tools menu and select Active Directory users and computers. Double click on the domain controller, select domain controllers. Here you can see that this is the main domain controller and this one is the server that we have promoted it to a domain controller. Let's check the DNS. Now, as I have newly promoted a domain controller along with the DNS server, I need to change the DNS server IP address in both primary domain controller and in this additional domain controller. Here you can see that the IP of the root domain is in here. Now I need to write down the IP of its own because this is the additional domain controller. I will do the same for the root domain. Now, let's switch back to the additional domain controller. Here we will check the replication. Open the Active Directory Site and Services. Expand it. Expand both of the servers. 
select NTDS settings under additional domain controller, right click on it, select all tasks from the right click menu and select check replication topology. Click OK. Now let's refresh this page. Now select the NTDS settings, right click on it and select replicate now from the right click menu. Here you can see that the Active Directive Domain Services has replicated the connections. We will do the same for the Root Domain Controller. It might take a few minutes so that the data to be replicated. As you can see that it has replicated. Now select the NTDS settings, right click on it and select replicate now from the right click menu. Now we need to check the replication that whether it works between the additional domain controller and primary domain controller or root domain. For the purpose of this replication, I will create a test GPU in the additional domain controller and then we will check it on the primary domain controller or root domain. On the server manager, click on the tools menu and select group policy management. Expand your domain. Click on the domains. Select techforall.com and select group policy objects. Now I will create a test GPU in here. Right click and select new. Specify a name for the GPU. Test GPU created by additional domain controller. Click OK. Now we need to check whether this GPU exists on the primary domain controller or root domain group policy management or not. Click on the tools on server manager and select group policy management. Select tech for all forest, select domains, expand tech for all and select group policy objects. Here you can see that the test GPU which was created by additional domain controller exists in here. It means that the data has been replicated. Now let's create a new test GPU in the primary domain controller or root domain and then we will check that whether it exists on the group policy management of additional domain controller or not. Right click and select new. Give a name for this GPU. Test GPU created by root domain. Click OK. Now let's switch to the additional domain controller. right click and refresh. Here you can see that the GPU that was created by root domain also exists in here, which means that the replication works fine. You can check the replication by creating a GPU, by creating users, groups, containers in both of the OUs. And that's all for today. If you need any help, comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel so that you can become part of the newest technology on techforall.com. I will catch you very soon with another tutorial. Till then, have a nice time.